So, you want to make lemonade, but you don't have lemons. But, you know what, who... So, you want to make lemonade, but you don't have lemons. Well, you know who does have lemons? Your grandma on 67th Street. You should go visit her sometime. Hey guys, I'm Batats by Kai. Kai. Today we're back once again taking a look at how to go ahead and use the snapping tool in the newest version of Blender, which is 3.3.1. Um, some things look a little bit different, but it basically works exactly the same. I got a couple of comments as actually asking me about the uh, new... Uh, not UI, but just the new snapping system in general. So we're gonna go over some really uh, super basic tips here. You can see um, we have a default team, almost default, basically default. And we can do that. Up, 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 up. There we go. So we have a default scene here, as you can see. Nothing's been changed. Nothing's been you know messed with. Just so we can focus on default cube, I'm gonna get rid of everything else by selecting them by dragging a box and just hitting delete on my keyboard. Um, let's go ahead and select the cube here. Now you can see if we want to go ahead and move this around, we would we would hit G on our keyboard. So hit G. And you see you can move it around now. Boom, it's slipping and sliding all around like a, like a nice little water park. Crazy. Now, if you right-click, you can cancel that movement and put it back to where it started in the center of the screen. But if you go up to the top here, you have the this little magnet tool that says snap. Now, when you turn this on and when you hit G, you can see that it instantly starts snapping around to the grid, which is the little grid you see on the ground. Now, the common misconception is that this, what you see on the ground, the grid, is what it's what the cube is snapping to it's not actually snapping to to this little grid that's on the ground it just appears if as if it is because if i was to go to the actual like grid section and change the um the units right here so if i go to this tab right here which is the uh, scene properties tab and go and drop down to the units i can change the size and scale of the grid but if I if I do that and I snap things around, it doesn't really you can see how it's it kind of snaps onto it. So oh, if we go ahead and move this to like, let's say two, it's seven on my numpad. So you see a top facing view. You can see that if I move it around, it's snapping to all of these um, different uh, these different little pieces, which is good. So if we go ahead and move move off of like the seven top down view, you can do the same thing, too. But if it's seven on your numpad or three. Three is a side view, one is the front facing view, and uh, seven is the top view. Um, so if you go ahead and look at this now, um, you can hit G to move this around and it'll snap to all of the different uh, places in the grid. So essentially what you need to do if you want to make smaller like snapping segments is go ahead and just change this unit scale. So if we change this to five, you can see they're much smaller now. I mean, move it around much smaller increments. Um, again, it's shift D, duplicate this over here, you know, duplicate this over here, you know, whatnot. If you want really much bigger um, increments obviously you would turn it down so instead you would go negative underneath one so you would go like point two make these a lot bigger you go negative one you know what i mean well not you can't go negative numbers but you can go like it's super super small decibel numbers like uh like this so we, oh whoa when you zoom out you see how big the grid is now but um essentially what you have here is the ability to go ahead and snap to any size that you want now the the other thing that i want to talk about is if you hit this little drop down which we've talked about in a previous video a long, long time ago now, though. Um, you can change the increment to snap to different things. So if you want to snap it to vertex, it'll snap to each ver vertex of whatever object you're moving it into. So if I was to have two cubes here, you can see that if I have this on a vertex and I move this towards the cube, it'll snap to each one of the corners of the cube when I put it next to it like that. Ask me my cursor though, not the actual cube. So if you put your the cube next to it, it won't do anything. The cursor has to be on the on the the um, vertices. That's a big mis misconception uh, as well. Right click to get rid of that. Now you can see we have other things here. We have edge, you know, face project, all these things. These things don't typically matter in a, a super basic form of snapping. You're most likely not ever going to use any of these other than most likely 90% of the time increment, maybe vertex and maybe edge sometimes. The rest of these you're not going to want to, you're not even really going to use these most likely. Um, and then snap uh, width is just literally, it's just also things you're probably not going to mess with too often unless you're using something like um, uh, edge or volume and you want to do something that's in the center you want to snap to the center of the object instead of the vert and instead of the corner so if i put this on center and hit g to move this over you can see oh you can see that if i take it off of vertex and put it on edge you can see that i can actually go ahead and kind of snap on the side of the edge here it's not gonna it won't line up to the exactly the side but you can see i'm i'm snapping this to the edge of the uh, the cu the cubes here and you can see the snap width like i said it's just going to be this says uh snap closest snap closest point onto target snap the center of it to the 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 target or and whatnot so you can see here if i 
uh, if you take a look at this, what has snapped to the edge of the cube is the center, the pivot point of this cube. But if I put this back on closest, you can see that when I do this, the edge, the closest thing, the closest part of the cube will snap to these other, this other part of the cube instead of the center. So that's essentially what that does. Um, and the other ones are basically the same type of thing. But let's go ahead and um, and uh, leave that on closest and put this back on increment. Now you can see the last thing that I want to talk about is one last thing. Now if you a big issue with snapping is if you scaled your object or it's an abnormally sized object. Like if I were to go ahead and turn this unit scale back to one, um, you can see that we have the cube here. Now the cube, if we hit seven, it perfectly fits in these four little cubes. So one cube here, one cube here, one cube here, and one cube here. It fits perfectly in all four of these. Now, if I was to scale this by hitting S, you can see that it no longer perfectly fits in those. It's kind of like off. It's like, you know, halfway in between these cubes, these, you know, whatever. So if I hit Shift D now to move this over and snap to the center, you can see that it kind of doesn't snap on the, the, the center, right? Because it should snap about right here, right? Look at this. But if I if I just it won't really snap on that point. It'll kind of snap around it a little bit. It, it'll do some weird things, and I can't line it up with this other cube you see how there's like a little gap there i can't line it up and it'll like overlap and it'll be all weird and stuff the reason for this is because you've scaled it to an abnormal size so if i go ahead and hit this little this little tab open on the right hand side here you can see that the scale is 0 0.837085 so that's a really weird scale so blender does it is not going to be able to snap to this uh, snap to this uh, size unless you play around with this unit thing and get these to line up perfectly on a, on another very abstract and strange value you know so that would be like very very difficult to do so what my advice to you is you can see here we have uh we have this right here you see that i'm about on 1.195 and it looks like it kind of fits in these four pieces right here and if we hit shift d duplicate this it kind of looks like it lines up now if you zoom in all the way it's not exactly on perfectly but i see uh, you can you can you can definitely get in close here and 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 try and get this as close as possible that's really close Look at that. oh that's that's literally perfect holy so what is that 1.194620 holy all right and if you sh hit, hit shift d now you can see you can move it over and now it's like it's scaling like it's no big deal and it's also a weird scale instead of being all ones like it was like this so we made it smaller but now it snaps on the grid which is nice so um that's the last thing i want to talk about but now if you want to go ahead and apply this scale so let's go ahead and put this back on one if you want to apply this scale you can go up to object apply scale and you can see when we look back at the scale here it'll be one 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 no matter it before we did this it's 0.8 now it's 0.1 now now it's one um because we applied the scale so now things won't be glitchy or weird if you try to scale them or use modifiers or something it's just a good idea to apply a scale every time you make a make a scale transform on an object um unless you just don't want to for some reason but it's usually a good idea so there you go. Hope you ladies and gentlemen learned something new about this snapping kind of scale type tutorial, which kind of all fits in together. But yes, I, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye. Oh, and wait, that's a fake me out. Look at this. Wait, one last thing. Right as I was saying goodbye, there's one last thing. If you want to go ahead and use the rotate and scale um, uh, snapping tools, you have to enable them. I was just thinking about this before I decided to sign off. If you want to go ahead and scale this, you can see when I scale it, it doesn't, it doesn't snap to anything. It's just like a smooth scale. And also, if I double tap R to rotate, it doesn't snap to anything. But if we hit this little drop down, turn on rotate and scale, if we hit S, it scales up. And if we double tap R, it snaps like that as well. So R, X, and then it snaps to individual angles. So that's that. That's how you that's how you use scale on rotate and snap by the way there you go i forgot to mention that so like i said i hope you enjoyed today's tutorial ladies and gentlemen i'll see you in the next one but until then bye bye